Welcome to part one of my Unreal Engine crash course. So on today's agenda is installing the Unreal Engine, uh, setting up a project, and then learning the basics of the editor. So let's go. Um, to install the engine, head over to unrealengine.com, scroll past all this neat stuff here, and uh, head to this blue section. Uh, click on this button, and it will take you to this page. So, uh, to install the engine, you actually need to install the Epic Games Launcher first. And you will also need to create an account. Uh, once you have downloaded this launcher, you will be prompted to log in. So, uh, you can download the launcher from here. And uh, once that's done, we'll go to the next step, installing Unreal Engine. There's also a video here in case you want to watch that instead of mine. But why should you? One thing to note uh, are also the system requirements. So uh, Unreal Engine, it's, it's quite a beefy software. You will need a decent computer to run it. So if you're, if you're just scraping by on like a laptop from 2012, uh, yeah, it's probably going to be a bit difficult. Just thought I'd mention that. All right, here I am in the Epic Games launcher. Um, you will be prompted to log in when you first start this, so uh, once you've done this, you should be greeted by this page. If not, uh, on the left-hand side, head over to the Unreal Engine tab, and once you see this, uh, then click on Library. Here you can see I already have an engine installed. All the engine versions are up here, and all of my projects are down here. Uh, chances are this and this section, they're both empty. So once you created a project, you can double click on it here and start it up. But first, uh, we need to install a version of the engine. I suggest you go with the most recent one, unless you have a good reason not to. Unless it's a preview, and that's kind of a beta. I wouldn't really recommend that, especially if you're a beginner. Uh, you can click Install, and it will prompt you for location, standard stuff, shortcut. Uh, one thing to note are the options. You can disable certain components here. For instance, if you don't want to create projects for certain platforms, Android, iOS, Linux, etc., etc., you can uncheck those here. And uh, the rest of these I'd leave checked. Most definitely the templates, because we're going to use one of those. Uh, for the rest, it's not really that important, it's not that large. But you can see the it does require a certain amount of hard drive space to make sure you have that available as well. So once you, you're done selecting your stuff, click Apply and then Install. And this will probably take a while, depending on your internet connection. I'll see you when it's downloaded. All right, you should now have a version of the engine installed. So uh, let's create a project. Uh, to do that, click on Launch, and it will take a little while and open up the Unreal Engine launcher. Okay, here I am with the Unreal Project Browser. That's what it's actually called. So um, chances are this is empty as well because you don't have any recent projects. Uh, we're going to select a template and then modify that to create our beautiful platformer game. On the left side, hand side you can see there are a bunch of different categories. Uh, we're interested in games. Here are the templates. Uh, we're going to use the third person template as it is the closest one to the game we're actually, we actually want to make. Uh, select that, then you can see a description here. Uh, choose blueprint. Uh, target platform, desktop, quality preset, maximum. This is all fine. You can enable starter content if you've downloaded it. Remember, there was a starter content section before uh, when you install it. Uh, ray tracing, <laughs> if you fancy it. Then select a project location and a name. I'm gonna name mine Crash Course. Uh, create, and this might take a little while as well. Okay, uh, once your project has finished uh, being created, you should see something that looks like this. A bunch of stuff up here, to the right, and in here. Don't worry. Um, this project is already able to be played, so uh, you can, to playtest it, click on this button. Wow, look! Okay, so uh, this viewport, as the window is called, needs to gain focus, so click on it once, and now you can move around mouse to move the camera around, WASD to move the character around, and space to jump. Pretty standard controls. Uh, move around a bit, get a feel for the controls, knock those boxes around. Yeah, look, we already have some cool stuff. 
that we can build upon. So uh, to exit this play in editor session, as it's called, you know, because we're playing in the editor, you can just press escape. All right. So as you can see, our camera has moved to the uh, location where we stopped playing. So uh, to move the camera, um, there are multiple ways you can do this. You can scroll to go back and forth, uh, hold left mouse to do this. But what I like to do is press and hold right mouse and use WASD to move around, just like in the game. Um, what you can also do, it's also very practical to go up and down without having to look down and then pressing W, you can press a Q to go down and E to go up. It's right next to WASD, so it's very handy. Okay, these are the basic controls. With these, you can fly around. And uh, you can select stuff uh, while not holding uh, right mouse with the left mouse button. So as you can see on the right-hand side in this outliner window, uh, we've selected the SM underscore cube 4. If we select something different, you can see it also corresponds in here to what we selected. You can also select stuff from here. So it works both ways. Uh, on the right, you can see the details. This is a bunch of stuff um, about the asset, which you can change. Um, you don't really have to worry about most stuff in here, but uh, some things to note uh, are the location, rotation, and scale, which make up the transform. So uh, next we're going to learn how to change these um, inside of the viewport. So to do that, we're actually going to learn how to add something to the level. In this case, we're just going to use one of those simple cubes. You could theoretically just press Control c Control v to copy it and delete to remove it again, but I'm going to show you a different way. Go to Window, Content Browser, select either one of those, and you should see something like this. So this is the Content Browser. This is something you'll be seeing quite a lot of. Um, this basically contains all of the assets your game has. Assets can be anything from, you know, a 3D model to uh, a character, a sound, uh, a blueprint, which is a script. We're going to see more of those in parts two and onward. Um, a lot of different stuff, basically. Everything that's required to make a game, well, a game. In our case, we're going to head in the, into this folder, level, level prototyping, then into meshes, which are 3D objects. And then we're going to click and drag this SM underscore cube and drag it in here. And look. A new cube has appeared in here and in here as well. Um, to move a cube, we can use this little gizmo, as it's called, and uh, drag on those arrows to move it in either direction, up, down, left, right, front, cent front, back. And you can also move it in multiple directions if you press these, or in all three at once if you grab the center. Um, um, while we're doing this, uh, pay attention to the values on the right, and you can see they're changing when I move this cube around. And uh, just like we can select stuff from here or from here, we can also change the location from here as well and it will update in the viewport. We also have rotation and scale. So to uh, rotate a cube, press this button or E to uh, select this other gizmo. And now you can rotate a cube. Nice. And last but not least is scale. For that, you can press R, um, and now we can scale the cube to whatever size we want. Very nice. Uh, to go back to moving it, you can press W, and note that W, E, and R are right next on the keyboard, so you can quickly cycle through this. Very handy. All right. So this is basic object manipulation. You know how to move the camera, you know how to add stuff, how to delete stuff. And let's just add this back. And if we play, you can see, oh, look, there's our new cube. Very cool. So these are the basics of how you build a level. Now you know how to play your game and test it, add and remove stuff from the level, move it around, uh, very basic forms of manipulation. And yeah, there's only one more thing I'd like to show you. Uh, this is more of a convenience for some of you who 
don't quite have powerful computers. This is uh, the engine scalability settings under settings and then engine scalability settings. And you can change the quality to low if you find that your editor isn't running so smoothly. Alright, this has been a quick introductory episode. Uh, I know the pace is quite quick, so uh, yeah, be sure to rewatch the parts you didn't quite understand, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. In part two, we're gonna start actually building our game and adding logic to this project. See you then, and Creator out.